great to see um, everyone again and again spending uh, my lunch with you on this fairly green, miserable uh, uh, start of October here in London. I hope the sun is shining a little bit more wherever you are in the world. Um, but yeah, today what we're going to talk about is this concept of letting go what you can't uh, control. OK, um, but first of all, just a, a very quick introduction to me, just in case you don't know me. Uh, my name is Andy Keneally and I work with predominantly project managers to help them move to more fulfilling work so they can thrive in the next steps um, of their career. I have uh, been a project manager for 14 years myself across several industries such as banking, professional services and technology. And now I'm also a careers coach and a freelance workshop facilitator. I'm also a little bit of a design thinking nerd. I have uh, been involved in lots of design thinking uh, workshops in the past, and I really enjoy um, getting involved in those. Uh, but today I'm really excited to be talking to you about this concept of letting go of what you can control. And we're going to talk about why it is not a good thing to get too bogged down in those things that you cannot control. And I'll go through some tips and a very practical exercise to help you let go of those things and focus in on the areas that you actually can control. Just a heads up for everyone before I dive into the content is that this will be an interactive and practical step through a, to a tool which will help you with this. So I strongly advise that you have a pen and paper ready because you will need it uh, for this section. You can expect lots of circles and scribbles and all that sort of a thing. Um, if you don't have a pen and paper close by, um, use something on your laptop like an Apple Note or something like that that can help you jot down a couple of things as we move along. All right. Uh, just before we move on, I'd love to get to know a little bit more about all of you in the call as well. So um, can I ask you to either take out your phones and scan the QR code that you see in the screen to join our Menti, or alternatively, you can open the browser and go to menti.com and input the code that you see on the screen, which is 4816-7409. That's 4816-7409. All right, I'll just give you a minute to join that. I can see a couple of people starting to join. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question. If you're still uh, joining, there'll be instructions at the top of uh, the slides as we move along uh, with the codes, so you'll be um, able to catch up as we go along um, also. So first of all, <clears throat> I have a really important question about pineapple and pizza. Is it acceptable or is it not? Please vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a lot of no's and absolutely not <laughs> uh, in the chat. I have to say that I'm one of those people um, that I actually don't mind pineapple and pizza, but would I pick it as my first order of choice uh, when it comes to, you know, picking a pizza out of a menu? Um, no, it wouldn't be. Um, you know, I'm more of a pepperoni um, sort of a guy um, uh, or a ham and mushroom. Uh, but, you know, would I specifically pick, pick a pizza because of pineapple? Absolutely not. Um, yeah, and then we have a couple of people that would uh, pick it off. Shows a bit of flexibility eh? <laughs> and, uh, uh, to pick it off as well. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, 
I'd like to get to know a little bit more about who I have in the room with me um, here today. So if you could quickly share your name and occupation, it gives me a very good idea about the breadth of talent and skills that we have um, in the room here today. So if you could just um, share that, that would be great. Hi, Emma. Thanks for joining. All right, we have Charlotte and we have Funby. We have uh, Jane, thank you. Uh, Diana, Christopher, we have Catherine, we have Kaylee, we have Nick, Edward, Ida. All right, everyone. Thank you um, so much uh, for joining. And Rosie, I can see uh, your comments in the Google chat here as well, um, Research and Insight Consultant. Thank you so much for joining, Adriana. Thank you, Nick, CMO. All right, fantastic, everyone. Um, so uh, as expected, we have a lot of creative uh, people here in the room. Um, I was expecting that, but I see that we also have people around um, journalism and project management and Nick, uh, a CMO there as well. Um, it's fantastic uh, to see um, all the uh, different talents that we have here in the room today. So thank you so much for sharing. All right, um, today we're going to be talking again about letting go of what you can't control. But more often than not, there is a worry there on your mind. There's something there that is going to keep you awake at 3 a.m. and you're trying to figure out why can't I figure this out and what can I do to try and fix it? So. When thinking about your freelance career, what do you think is that big worry that's on your mind at the moment? What is concerning you at the moment? And just to reiterate, um, any uh, comments that you put up here are completely anonymous. Um, so feel free to be as honest as you like when it comes to um, sharing your worries with me. All right, I can see a few coming in. Where is my next bit of work going to come from? How do I win uh, new clients? Being out of work for long stretches is somewhat related to that also. Interesting ones here about um, the lack of interesting creative work and that I'll stagnate. Um, so, you know, how do we keep that kind of passion that spark and that enjoyment in the work that we actually uh have but also what we want to work on uh again in the future all right yeah it's a competitive environment it's scarce uh to win some work that i won't be busy remotely and lack self-confidence and self-promote myself thank you for being um so honest um uh, here with that and yeah you know when it comes to that competitive market how do you stand out in the crowd um you know particularly if uh, there's you know your skills are in demand but there's a huge amount of supply um of that work there available uh, to you pitching bigger lack of resources and a people um scale so yeah how do you take that next step step up from the kind of smaller projects into um, the bigger projects that can be a massive step up in terms of what you need to bring in that kind of confidence level um, and that you need for that and gathering those sort of case studies and testimonials for that. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to move on. Thank you so much again for uh, being honest about this. Now, I have one last question and then we'll start diving into the content. Usually these worries they impact us in a couple of different ways, right? Um, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. Some of us, we might lack sleep. For some of us, we might have that sick feeling in the stomach when we think about some of uh, uh, these things that it shows up physically. Emotionally, we might, you know, have the voices in our head saying, you can't do this. What do you think you're doing? And they're holding you back. Um, 
And there's an interesting one there about work-life imbalance. Are you doing too much work and too little life? Or is it the other way around? Is it not balancing out? Um, but also those sort of productivity issues. Then if you are working, are you being productive in your work, um, uh, in your delivery? Which can be difficult also when it could be something that you don't have that much interest in and you feel like that you're stagnating, as someone just mentioned earlier. All right. So results are starting to come in. I know that they're jumping up and down quite a bit, um, but so far the winner seems to be work-life imbalance um followed by oh the emotional one has just jumped up um now uh where it could be that kind of anxiety that nervous uh sort of feeling again those what i call mind monkeys in your head um telling you to stop and not do this anymore or perhaps it's those sort of mood swings you're just not in a good mood <laughs> and it might impact not just you but the people around you as well All right, and yeah, sleep is starting to come up uh, now as well. And like, you know, I have to share, you know, the sleep thing is a big thing uh, for me. If I have something on my mind, I know I'm wide awake <laughs> for the night. That's my job for the night kind of a thing. Uh, I can struggle quite a bit um, with that. Um, so yeah, we have emotional uh, strain coming up at the top, followed by work imbalance uh, and uh, uh, sleep deprivation. and you know, these are quite interesting results. And it just shows, you know, that while we think it might be one symptom where let's say it's sleep deprivation, it can actually show up in a couple of other ways as well, that it could be those emotional kind of side of things. And the work life imbalance might be a trigger for some of those things as an example. So today, uh, as we go through this um, exercise, please reflect back on the worries and how they have impacted um, you currently and try to th if we'll figure out some actions about how you can try to remove these sort of you know frustrations that uh, you have for yourself so that you can uh, start to control them uh, a little bit more all right thank you so much everyone i'm going to flick back to the presentation um now all right and i'm going to uh, start talking about what exactly is control okay so control we naturally crave it in our lives because we want those outcomes that benefit us right but life is complex we know that right and it often throws challenges um, at us right understanding what we can and cannot control though is crucial for effective energy management for yourself, but also your quality of life depends on it. I want you to imagine control as being on a bit of a spectrum, right? On one end, you have things that are fully within your control, okay? They can be things like the services that you offer, or perhaps your work schedule. Perhaps you want to have more flexibility in your work schedule and you're going to tell that to clients. That is within your control. At the total opposite end of the spectrum are things that are entirely out of your control. There's nothing you can do about them. Some things that come up here could be things like the economy, trends in the economy, and also things like client personalities. You can't control how a client treats you sometimes right but trying to change things that are in this part that are beyond our control can lead you to feel really frustrated with the lack of progress you're just stuck <laughs> and you're wondering why nothing is changing and it's zapping all the energy out of you and it has impacts on your life just like what we've seen in the mentee there but there are benefits in focusing on the areas that you can control. They empower you to make more meaningful changes and help you adapt to mastering change. Change will always happen in our lives. And this quote from Brian Tracy really stood out to me when I was preparing this. 
And it was about this power of attitude when it comes to change. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude towards what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. Now I'm going to introduce a very practical tool that will help us explore more about this spectrum um, of control. And it'll help you understand and let go of what you cannot control. Start to accept some of these more unchangeable circumstances and realize the areas where you can focus your energy that would really make a difference to your life. And it is this tool called the Circles of Influence. It's a really helpful and simple model that was developed um, by Stephen Covey. St Stephen Covey is considered one of the best writers on leadership. He wrote the uh, book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this book, he explains this and talks about how we can be proactive and take responsibility in our lives, even when it feels like that life is completely out of control. This tool will help you focus your time and energy on the things that you can control so that you actually make those small steps towards the progress that you want and achieve your goals. It also helps you be more productive and also help you build resilience by understanding where you've power and where you've influence in your given situation. Now I'm going to step through the three circles uh, that we have here. And I'm going to start with that outer circle, that dark gray one, which is the circle of acceptance. This is the biggest circle. And these are the things that we all care about and we're concerned about, but we have little or no control over. It's those things that make you feel anxious and worried and show up in your life, just like what we did in the Menti, but you can't do anything about them. Or focusing your time and energy on these areas suck the energy out of you. So examples here again could be the economy. Recently, we went through political changes here in the UK. That's something that, fine, you can vote, but the result is generally out of your control. And what they do after is out of your control. Pandemics, <laughs> we've all lived through that. It was out of our control, right? So it's about taking the energy levels away from there and focusing on these other areas. I'm going to move to the next circle, which is the yellow circle, the inner circle, the circle of control. This is the smallest circle, but these are the things that you actually have direct control over. Now, you might be thinking, what are the things that I have absolute direct control over? The only thing you have true control over is yourself. Things like your actions, your decisions, your behaviors, your beliefs, your words. It's not your colleagues, not your clients, not your teammates, nothing like that. It's about you. You have control over this. So examples here could be your skills, your rates, your pricing, and the work environment that you work in. These are all decisions that you can make. Now, in between the accept and the control circles is this circle of influence. These are the things that you can impact, but not fully control. It is sometimes called a circle of action. And it includes all the areas that you actually have impact on the outcomes. But you, because you don't have direct control, you know, these things are happening external to you, but you can influence how they might, um, how the income, uh, how the outcome might come about. Okay. It is wise to spend some of your energy in this circle, bearing in mind that you can control your efforts in the circle, but not necessarily the outcome. Influence is actually where a lot of the power lives. The more time you spend on influence, the bigger that circle gets. 
But back to what Stephen Covey has been um, saying, and I mentioned it at the beginning of this slide, you need to be proactive. If you are reactive to your worries, your influence will start to shrink. So some examples here could be leveraging your client relationships to try and win more work with those clients. Your reputation could be one. Are you selling yourself out there enough? Um, are you doing enough PR for the skills and the talents that you all have? And again, your network, are, are you tapping into the same networks all the time that you know, aren't doing enough for you? Do you need to start tapping into new networks as an example? Now, you shared your worries with me earlier. Thinking about that worry, just spend a couple of seconds and ask yourself, where am I spending my energy today? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to actually start creating your own personal circles of influence. So this is where you need to get your pen and paper out that I warned you about. If not, again, just use something, um, a, a note on uh, your device, whatever you're using. And I'm going to step you guys uh, through each of these circles so that you can let go of what you can't control and start coming up with actions to utilize your energy in more fulfilling areas. And we'll do this in one, at one circle at a time. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to grab your pen and paper or get set up. And as you're getting set up, my advice will be to do this for the one situation that you're worried about. So it can be what you mentioned in the mentee earlier. But if you wish to focus on something else, you've changed your mind, feel free to do that. This is for you. All right. So the first circle we're going to focus on is that outer circle. It's the circle of acceptance. Again, this is the circle where you have no control. Start listing some of the things that you need to just accept are outside of your control. Start listing those down in that outer circle. I'll give you a minute to do that. Once you've that done, review what you have in that circle and ask yourself, what are the actions you can take to let go of putting your energy into these areas? Start writing down some actions to the side of your um, three circles there. Think about what strategies you can take for letting go of that frustration. Ask yourself, are there coping mechanisms that you can start to develop? Reflect on some of the habits that you have, or what are you doing when you start to focus on these things in your acceptance circle? Is there something that you need to stop doing today? For example, is it when you're reading the news that that sucks all the energy out of you because of the market being so tough and competitive out there at the moment. What can you do to stop reading the, that news article, for example, um, you know, and therefore we'll focus on other areas later. So what are the boundaries that you might be able to put in place?
just give you guys a minute to start writing down your actions and write down as many actions as you can think of that come to your head. We, we can focus on something later that will help you prioritize and narrow down on some of those actions. Now I'm going to move on to the next circle uh, in a couple of seconds. If I'm going too quickly for people, please let me know in the chat. I have the chat open in front of me and I can keep an eye um, on that. Uh, but just before we move to that next circle, just take some time again to look at those items that are in your accept circle. It's time to say goodbye to them. Okay? <laughs> Notice them and let them go when they reappear in your mind when you feel like that you're struggling in and getting frustrated in a situation practice noticing them and saying to yourself let them go and move on to your strategy or coping mechanism that you're going to put in place of thinking about that situation all right I'm going to move into the most inner circle now, which is the circle of control, the smallest circle. OK, and again, take some time to list the things that you have direct control over for your situation. And once you have those things listed in your circle of direct control, again, start thinking about what actions you can take in this area of control. Remember, you want to try and focus more of your energy into a circle like this. OK, so ask yourself, are you doing enough for the things in your control circle? How can you put more energy into some of these areas in your control circle? What could you do with your control circle that will help you improve that situation? And again, start writing down some of those actions again to the side of your paper and, you know, write down as many that come to your mind. Having lots of actions coming out of an exercise like this um, is a good thing. It's about brainstorming. all right i'm going to move on to the final circle which is the circle in the middle 
again if i'm moving too quickly just let me know in the chat all right so we're now moving on to our circle of influence again your ability to influence in the hope of getting better outcomes for you but you don't have that direct control over these things so list those things uh, again in your circle for influence Now remember that this circle is also called a circle of action. There's usually a lot of action that can come out of what you can influence. So again, at the side of your uh, paper, write down what actions you can take from this and be as specific as possible uh, for this. You know, if, you know, you write down your network and you, you, the action is to grow your network, well, what networks? What are the, do you need to do some research before you start uh, looking at the networks that you want to um, move to next as an example? Be as specific as possible here, because that will help you grow this influence circle, which is what we want. Ask yourself what I can do to change this situation uh, for the better. If there's things in your influence circle that, you know, don't come naturally to you. Again, I'm going to use the networking one because that's the one I seem to have used so far um, quite a bit. But if you're not a natural networker, it's something that is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Ask yourself, what resources can you lean on to help you um, uh, become one, you know, um, or to you know, expand that network? Is there someone that you could go with to a networking event um, as, ex as an example to help you with this? And once you've actions written down from that circle of influence, just have one quick look back at the circle of acceptance and ask yourself, do you really have no control over these items? And have you challenged yourself to look at all your options here? Is there something there that you could add to the influence circle and therefore build some action out of it? Once you have all your circles done and all your actions listed out, you should have quite a few actions written down here, but let's be realistic here. You're not gonna get all of those done in a week or anything like that. So spend some time to prioritize those actions from most important to least important. I usually rank them from one to 10, with one being the most important, 10 being the least important, okay? So pick those 10 actions. Some of the others you might not want to prioritize just yet. If you're that way inclined, you could also write down dates. Dates are actually my favorite, um, but I'm conscious of the time. and <laughs> You might need to um, have a think about these things. If your action list is small, right, and you feel it's tight and there might be other things to add to it 
look at each action and ask yourself, is there something I need to have in place before this action? That will help you build out your action list. And also, again, take some time to ask yourself what resources can help you with each of those actions. So is there somewhere where you can find more information? Is there someone that has done this before that you could ask for advice or help um, to help you with those actions? All right. So you should have your full circles, your list of uh, what you can control, influence, and accept, and you should have all of uh, your actions there, right? This is a tool that you can use for any situation, okay? So we've just picked one today, but that's not to say a new situation will happen in a couple of days, and it can be in work and it can be in life also. So it's a tool that you can lean on to help you narrow into where you should uh, focus your energy. Now, I'm interested, rate from one to 10, how committed are you uh, for completing the actions that you have uh, set out in your um, action list uh, today? You can drop it into the chat. A score one means you're not committed at all. A score 10 means you're absolutely fully committed to get those actions done. It'd be great to get a sense of where you feel you are. Um, so drop your number into the chat. Thanks, Christopher, four, Catherine, seven, Emma, eight, one B, 6.5, very specific, I like it, Ed, eight, thank you so much for sharing, Andre, two, all right. For the number that you... <laughs> no worries, Christopher, if you want to put in a, a, another number, uh, feel free uh, to do so. Um, I always ask um, my clients, uh, you know, when we come towards the end of a session to rate on one to 10 how committed they are to taking some of the actions that they've set out today. And, you know, my question always back, which I'm going to say to you guys uh, again is, what would make it move to the next highest number? What is the action that will help move it to the next highest number? I.e., it helps you understand what are the things that are blocking you from taking that action. So, for example, do you need to, you know, figure out something at home, like making time for doing something um, and you need to get extra childcare or something like that, for example? So it helps you build out your actions a bit more. So take a minute or so to, well, a couple of seconds to um, do that as well. All right, I'm going to wrap up with a couple of top tips um, to uh, show you guys um, just before I wrap up, and then I'm happy to answer any questions um, uh, at the end. So just five top tips. Um, the first one is to set some SMART goals, the SMART acronym being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this one over and over again, but you know what? We don't use it enough, and it is really good for this sort of um, a, an exercise, especially because of the fact that we are looking at things that are attainable and realistic. So if you're not being attainable and realistic, you're probably in that control circle, uh, sorry, in the acceptance circle of the things that you do not have control over. 
So keep an eye on that because you want to keep your energy on the areas that you actually can control. And it can actually help you narrow down your goal into something a lot more specific for you. The next one is to cultivate a growth mindset. So instead of worrying about those potential failures and setbacks, view these challenges as opportunities for you to grow and learn and uh, build resilience uh, in yourself. It's all about that continuous improvement. I get it when something happens on that day, you're probably going to beat yourself down, but take some time to reflect and figure out how you can overcome some of those barriers um, uh, as they happen. The next one is to boost your influence. We've just gone through that exercise, but make sure that you keep looking at that influence circle because your influence will hopefully start to grow gradually, right? So take time to keep reviewing that to see what is the next step you can take to grow your influence for that given situation, obviously depending on how long that situation um, will go on for. Another one is to be a more proactive and start planning those future sessions for different possibilities looking at the good and the bad right so you know when there's a dip in the market i know that we look at strategies you know for you know saving and and all that kind of side of things but if you are looking at the good side of things let's say you're acquiring new skills what are the things that you can do once you have uh, that skill in place how can you start collecting more success stories and start bringing this out to more clients so that your income starts to increase um, as an example, it'll just help you that when you're in those situations, you, it's a lot more mindful that you are prepared for these. And then lastly is to start practicing some mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is very personal to a lot of us. We all have different ways and techniques uh, for doing this, but it helps you accept, you know, these realities that you cannot control. They're part of your landscape. There's nothing we can do about them. So start thinking about what that uh, technique is for you. For some people, that could be going out for a walk in nature, getting fresh air. For some people, it could be journaling. I've just recently started journaling. I use an app called the Stoic app. Um, it has helped me an awful lot. Um, and I only started about three weeks ago, but I'm, I've am i journaled literally every morning and evening because it has helped make it easy for me. Um, so I do recommend that one. Meditation. Some people like meditation. Other people don't like it at all. It depends on what you like again. So I've uh, used Headspace a couple of times. Um, I'm happy to share a free trial to Headspace for 30 days. If you feel that that would be useful for you, just let me know. All right. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up um, here now again, but remember, um, you know, again, this tool, um, it's not just about your freelance career. It can be for any area in your life. And that by applying the principle of the tool and also some of these tips, you'll hopefully find more freedom, reduce stress and just, you know, be more, you know, you'll hopefully have a better life and some of those impacts that we had in the Menti earlier will start to reduce also because you're learning to accept and put your energy into the places that will actually help you move forward. Now, I'm more than happy to talk more to anyone. I'm happy to answer any questions here. And I'm also happy to connect with people. Um, you know, the QR code there on the screen is to my LinkedIn. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, via a message on my LinkedIn. Otherwise, you have my email address um, uh, there as well. I'm more than happy to connect and answer more questions and discuss more of this with you. All right, that's it from me. Any questions from anyone? Any comments? Anything like that? Thank you, Ada. <laughs> I'm still waiting in case someone is typing a very, very long question. <laughs> no worries. No problem, Christopher. I'm, I'm glad that you uh, liked us. And Crispin, yeah, thank. Uh, no worries in the tips. Actually, I have a sheet here that I can give you with the tips to 
uh, takeaway. Just give me a second there and I'll get them and you guys will be able to download it.